and you get these synchronistic events that happen in your life. One of them was that my father was a pilot for the Department of Transport here in Canada. And one of the radar technicians in his office had actually had a sighting in this area, this small town thing. So he said, well, Ernie Epp has this sighting. He wants to talk to you. And so I go to talk to this Ernie Epp guy. And he says, you know, he tells me the sighting. It's just, you know, an ordinary sighting. He saw something flying around, whatever. And then he says to me, he says, you know, if you really, and this is this real weird synchronicity where he says, you know, if you really want to know what's going on with UFOs, you should study with the Canadian government. And here's me on this search. I'm trying to figure out, like, what's the ultimate answer to this thing? If you really want to know what's going on with UFOs, you should study what the Canadian government used to uh, research. Wilbur Smith ran the whole project, and I worked for him. And I said, you did? And he said, yeah, he was the smartest guy I ever met in my life. And he said he um, uh, uh, he, he was the smartest guy, but he, he was crazy. I mean, he was talking to aliens, and they were landing in his backyard. And I went, he was the what? And I couldn't believe this. He was telling me this bizarre story about this guy. And he's, he turns out he's a contactee. And he's the guy that ran the Canadian government UFO program. So I'm still very young. And that gives me my next opportunity. So I give up on the sightings and I buy a plane ticket and I fly to Ottawa. Wilbur Smith, who ran the Canadian government program, by then was dead. He died in 1962. This is like 1977 now. And I interview his wife. And she's secretary to the Speaker of the Senate, very high level herself. And she's retiring in a, within the week. And so she's ready to talk. And she starts telling me this story about Wilbur Smith and these contacts with the Canadian government. And they had the contact with this alien and they're going to land it at, a, at an army base in Canada and uh, the involvement of the prime minister. And it's like she's talking about her dog. I mean, her, like it's like just affa, affa, affa. And she's talking about this alien. I'm going like, wow. It's like I was just sort of blown away. So I gathered all his material. We discovered this document that is declassified in 1978. And this, I believe, is the most significant document in the whole UFO field because there's absolutely no doubt that this document is legitimate. It's in the uh, archives in Ottawa, uh, in the Department of Transport files. Um, uh, There's copies, there's draft copies in Wilbur Smith's files, the guy who wrote the document. I talked to Dr. Oman Slant, who's mentioned in the document, and the only objection he had to the document was, well, Wilbur Smith didn't have authorization to put top secret on the document. To which I replied, well, how do you do it then? What does he send it in by the mail and let somebody determine what it is? I mean, he has to put top secret on a document. You can declassify it right away, which is what they did. They moved it down one step below. But what happens is Wilbur Smith is running the Canadian government, and then they call it the Flying Saucer Program. And Wilbur Smith never used the word UFO, ever. He always used the word Flying Saucer, Flying Disc. And what happens is the Canadians are interested, and Wilbur Smith has these ideas for propulsion. So... He's uh, uh, a high-level radio operator, a uh, uh, radio engineer, the top guy for the Department of Transport. He goes to the Americans, and he's talking through conferences, and they're negotiating FM radio stations across the border and stuff like that. And he talks to people, and he says, I suddenly find out that it's a bunch of smoke. And where there's smoke, there's got to be fire. And he starts digging in. So what they do is they, they go through classified channels. So they get a guy by the name of Arnold Wright, who was a military liaison in Canada, They go through the Canadian Embassy in Washington, D.C., and he goes through classified channels and talks to the Research and Development Board in the United States, which is the part of the Defense Department that actually builds the weapons, builds the atomic bomb, the hydrogen. At the time, they were working on the hydrogen bomb. And he goes through there, and according according to what Wilbur Smith got, the file comes back, and Wilbur Smith writes this document and says, we've talked to American officials, and they have told us the following items. Flying saucers exist. It's the most highly classified subject in the United States, rated two points higher than the hydrogen bomb. It's of tremendous significance to the Americans, and there's a small group headed by Dr. Vannevar Bush. She was the science advisor to President Roosevelt. He's the guy who worked on the the proximity fuse, the atomic bomb, radar, uh, jet engines, plastic explosives, all those inventions of World War II. Vannevar Bush was the guy that ran all his programs for the scientific side. Then there was a military side that ran the other side, but he, he was the main guy. And now they, it, Wilbur Smith identifies in his document that he's running the program. And then this thing that comes into my later download in 2012, which I wouldn't realize until 2012, was the next line in the document says, and we were also told by American officials that other things might be associated with the flying saucers, such as mental phenomena. And the Americans aren't doing very well because they've said to us, if we're working on the program, working on a program, they're willing to exchange credentials and talk to us. Now, the key part to that is that now we sort of know aliens are telepathic. Do you have uh, contactees, experiencers, abductees? All these people are talking about these aliens being telepathic. But in 1950, 
the, the first abductees would not be known until Betty and Barney Hills came out, book came out in the mid 1960s. The first contactees who said, you know, they got for rides on flying saucers and stuff like that would not appear until about a week after the detonation of the hydrogen bomb. Suddenly all these people appeared. But in 1950, there was nobody in the public who was saying, I'm talking to aliens and aliens are telepathic. So the question is, how did the Americans know to tell the Canadians in this top secret memo that mental phenomena was part of the phenomena? 